Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me. We are honored and glad that we got the wake-up call this morning from Jesus from on high. I want to take a moment to thank you, Fort Foot family, for your dedication, for your commitment through 2021. You were faithful. You were consistent. You were being obedient to the will of God. As you already know, by now, we were blessed to pay off the mortgage of this sanctuary. We owe no man nothing. It's because of your goodness and your mercy and your obedience that God has done such a great and marvelous thing. We look forward to all God is going to do in this phenomenal year of 2022. Somebody said 2021, sometimes up, sometimes down, almost level to the ground. But we look forward to serving God with excitement, even with an insatiable desire, even to activate Matthew 22, 37, to love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, and with all of our mind. Together, we will lift up the name of Jesus and see his mighty works in action. Be so kind this morning as we ought to meet me in Acts chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. There was a word for our hearts and our encouragement this morning. Acts chapter 12, beginning in verse 1, Dr. Luke gives us an uplifting word to begin this year of 2022. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quarters of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made with our ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hand. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him and was not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of the Herod and from all the expectations of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered this thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she saw knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said the, it is his angel. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. May the Lord, but he beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, go show these things unto James and to the brethren and he departed and went into another place. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers and doers of his holy and precious word. Eternal God, our Father, we come to say thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Your mercy is from everlasting unto everlasting unto us that reverence and worship you. Your mercy is great above the heavens. God, we thank you for this time of sharing this morning. Please rain down your power from on high. Calm my nerves. Give peace to my mind, so that your word will come forth in a phenomenal way to bring honor and glory to your name and help to your people of God. It's in the mighty, precious, resurrected name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. 
Pray with me this morning from the subject, our theme for 2022 as a church, the power of a praying church. The power. Somebody say power of a praying church. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. This Herod was the grandson of Herod the Great, who had all the male children killed two years of age near the time of Jesus. He was also the nephew of Herod Antipas, the one that had John the Baptist beheaded. So he comes from a demonic, evil, wicked line of Herod's. Verses 1 through 4 talks about the persecution of the church. He stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. That word vex, vex for definition. It means to do harm. It means to frustrate. It means to worry. It means to infuriate. It means to incense, even to inflame and enrage, to cause distress. But church history tells us, as well as the word of God, that the persecuted church is a powerful church. What Satan meant for evil, God has a way of divinely and sovereignly flipping the script, turning it around, take what seems like a bad situation and turns it into a blessed situation. This old ugly, evil, wicked Herod killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded now to take Peter also. These were the days of unleavened bread. It was near the time of the Passover when they come to celebrate the time of the resurrection. And when he had apprehended him, he put Peter in prison and delivered him to four quarters of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. The book of Romans tells us that it was the resurrection that declared Jesus to be the son of God with power. Herod made one mistake to keep Peter in prison until after they celebrated the resurrection. The Bible tells us that, Romans 8, 18, that this, Paul says, I reckon, I reason, I've come to know that this present suffering is not even worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. In order to be able to make it through times of persecution, a Christian must become bifocal. Being bifocal, I mean this, while we live in the real world, we see the realities of the present trials and tribulations. We can't stay there while we focus for a moment on the present trials and tribulation. We got to focus more clearly on the divine glory that shall be revealed in us in the future. So we deal with presence and reality, but by faith we look to the future, knowing that God is a strong deliverer. Philippians 3, 10, Paul says, Oh, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, thereby I'll be made conformable even unto his death. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 12 says, If we suffer with Jesus, we shall surely reign with him. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Further help for this morning, Acts chapter 14, 22, Paul said these words. He told the folk to continue in the faith. He said, here is how life really goes. We're going to enter into the glory of the kingdom of God, but it will come through much Tribulation, Romans chapter 5 gives more prayer for support for tribulation work is patience. Patience experience, experience hope and hope need not be ashamed because the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit which God has given unto us. Every trial, every tribulation works for our good. All things work together for good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. So while the church is being persecuted, it's being prepared, it has power, it has energy, it's full of vigor and vitality. When God's people are persecuted, God gives strength beyond our human ability to endure. No problem, no situation can come in your life and my life that God cannot give us strength to overcome, for we are more than conquerors, for greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I'm trying to get to the point this morning to talk about the power of a praying church. Many today are going through hard times. We are not just in the midst of a national epidemic, 
we are in the midst of a global pandemic. What a global pandemic says to you and me this morning is that the whole world is sick and in need of a savior. In him was life and that life was the light of men. I come by to tell you this morning that be not weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap and not faint. God has not forgotten you. God has still knows what you're going through. The Bible said the eyes of the Lord go to and fro watching over his own. Peter was on death row, waiting to be executed. But Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. But here is the divine transition. Here's what happens when the people of God become the praying people of God. The power of a praying church, verses 5 through 12. Peter was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church of God for him. Never, ever, never, ever underestimate the power of prayer. Prison. Hmm. For folks, my attention this morning. America, home of the free, land of the brave, citadel of liberty and freedom. But sad to report this morning, we have over 6 million people incarcerated in our criminal justice systems. Further data tells me that a third of the 6 million look like you and me this morning. You may not be in a physical prison, but if you are held prison or hostage by anything, I come to give you good news this morning. Whom the sun set free is free indeed. Peter was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church of God for him. Luke chapter 18, 1 tells us that we should pray. Man ought to always pray and not to faint. It's very simple, my friends, this blessed Sunday morning. When we pray, we have power. When we pray, we have strength. When we pray, we submit our will and surrender to the almighty power of God. He lifts up our bow down head. He gives us joy in the midst of judgment. He gives us a song in the midst of sadness. He gives us music in the midst of our misery. There's something about prayer. When the Holy Spirit ministers to us, it's as if the presence of Jesus comes down. When we pray, we go up to Jesus to Christ. First Thessalonians 5, 17 said we ought to pray without ceasing. We ought to always be in a prayerful posture before our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. I heard the old deacon put it this way. Lord, I come to you this morning, this evening, head bent and body bowed. The hymnologist got it right when he said, oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. I got more good news this morning. I'm excited. I'm happy to be in a child of God's presence this morning. Proverbs 15, 29 said, God is far from the wicked. But I rejoice in the fact that he hears the prayers of the righteous. Help me out, Brother James, chapter 5, verse 16. He said, the effectual, heartfelt prayer of a man or woman of God availeth much. Our prayers, in fact, do go further than the ceiling in our church or the ceiling in our room. There's something about the power of prayer. In fact, Edward Swenson, Edward Payson put it this way. Prayer is the first thing. Prayer is the second thing. Prayer is the third thing necessary for every child of God. It's as necessary and as vital as us breathing. The late Reverend Dr. Billy Graham put it this way. In order for a nation to get back up on our feet, we must fall on our knees, even on our face before God. Let me say it this way. If we do not fall on our knees in faith, we may be slammed on our back in judgment and destruction Something about pray. a praying church is a powerful church. Peter was kept in prison. Many today are in prison of one kind or another. Your prison may be the prison of envy, the prison of jealousy, the prison of lying, the prison of low self-esteem. Whatever your prison is, I come to tell you this morning, there's good news in Jesus Christ. There is hope. There is help. He said to tell you in Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10, 
Be not fearful for I am with you. Be not dismayed or overwhelmed. I am your God. Remember who I am. I've got all power. I'm omniscient. I'm everywhere at the same place at the same time. I know what you need before you ask. I'm God Almighty and I'm God all by myself. And I'm glory will I not share with another. The power of a praying church. Yes, Peter was in a horrible situation, even on death row, but the church was praying without ceasing unto God for him. First Samuel chapter 12, verse 23. Samuel came before the people and said this in First Samuel chapter 12, verse 23. He said, God forbid that I should sin by ceasing to pray and intercede for you. Intercessory prayer is not just an option to be considered. It's a command and a privilege to be obeyed. Prayer is not a duty to be done. It is a privilege. We get to talk to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's not a stranger. He's not a distant location friend. He's our Father and the glory, Lord of all mercy and the God of all comfort. He tells us in Isaiah that I can turn your wilderness into pools of water. I flood your dry grounds. I pour water on him who is thirsty. What a privilege. What a joy divine. He said, behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. What a blessing. What a joy. What a privilege. I'm talking to my Father who knows and loves me and cares for me. First Peter 5, 7 says I can talk to him because... He cares for you and he cares for me. First Peter 3.12 said the eyes of God go to and fro, but his ears are open to our prayers. Satan doesn't care how much you work, how much you do, but he does care about how much we pray. One of the devil's concerns is to keep Christians from praying. Let me repeat. One of the devil's desires and concerns is to keep Christians from praying because he is not concerned about your prayerless studies, your prayerless work, or your prayerless religion. He laughs at our toil, mocks at our wisdom, but he trembles when we pray. There's power that's unleashed from on high. Prayer gives us a breakthrough when I feel like I'm in the midst of a nervous breakdown. When I pray, talk to my father, he tells me to run on, tells me that, Lord, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. The power of a praying church. Peter was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing. They prayed in the morning. They prayed in the evening. They prayed in the midnight hour. Somebody put it this way. Open your day with talking to God. He'll go with you throughout the day. Close out the day talking to God. He'll give you a good night's nice rest. Somebody said, prayer is not just a mental exercise or a verbal performance. It is coming humbly in the presence of God Almighty himself. Jesus is and was our supreme example. Mark chapter 1, verse 35. He rose up a great while before day, went to a solitary place, and he prayed. Mark 6, 46. He sent the disciples away, went to the mountain to pray. Luke chapter 6, verse 12 takes it even further. He goes to a mountain and he prays all night before choosing his disciples. If the master's lamb of God, king of kings and lord of lords, spent time in prayer, how about you and me this morning? It's so underutilized. It's power. It's as if we've got dynamite to blow up a building, but it's in a box. But when we pray, we ignite it and start blowing up problems. Prayer blows up troubles. Prayer blows through trials and tribulations. Matter of fact, tribulation work at patience. Patient experience, experience hope, and hope need not be ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts when we pray, we get in touch with God.
One of the issues we discovered in the leadership forums a short time ago, Dr. Rayner did a study on deceased, dead and dying churches. One of the truths that were revealed shockingly was that the churches that were in decline and even had died and gone out of business, there was a lack of prayer. That will not be on the docket of Fourth Baptist Church. We are and going to continue to be even more so a praying church because there's power in a praying church. Sometimes we struggle in our prayers, and God understands that. That's why he helps us. Not only were the church praying for Peter, I got more good news. Help me get it out this morning. Luke chapter 2, 22, 31 and 32. Jesus talks to Peter. He said, Peter, Satan desired to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But watch this. I am praying for you, Simon, Simon, calling twice. When you are converted, strengthen your brothers. You mean to tell me that God the Son, Jesus Christ, is praying for you and praying for me? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Not only is it great to have the church praying for one another, but Jesus Christ himself is praying for you and me this very moment, this very morning in time. Not only is Jesus praying for us, Hebrews 7, 25 says he saved from the guttermost to the uttermost for he ever lived to make intercession for you and me while we're struggling down here, trying to do our best, pressing for the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Jesus himself is ever living to make intercession for you and me. He said, that's my child, that's my son, that's my daughter. Blot out his transgressions. Give him power, give him help, give him hope. Give him joy. Guide me, oh, thy great Jehovah. Pilgrim through this barren land. Not only is Jesus praying for us, but the Holy Spirit says, I know your infirmity. I come to help you. You don't even know sometimes what to pray for, but I'm making intercession for you with groanings and travailing which cannot even be uttered. Help me, Holy Spirit. The power of prayer, Jesus models it. Jesus exemplifies it. He's praying for you. He's praying for me. Hold up your head, child of God. Run on and not be weary in well doing. Do not lose heart. Do not lose favor. You're going to make it. God is for us. If God be for us, who can be against us? Can I get a witness? There's no defense for prayer. On our knees, on our face before God. Lord, I come to you, weary, wounded, and sad, sometimes broken, tears in my eyes, but knowing that you love me more than I ever could deserve. I feel your help. I feel encouraged. I feel like going on because I know you are with me. Let me get back to the text here. Herod brought him forth the same night. Peter on death row, sleep between two soldiers, Bound with two chains. While they were looking at two soldiers bound with two chains, Peter said, I've got three. I've got God the Father, I've got God the Son, and I've got God the Holy Ghost. Last time I checked my math correctly, three is more than two. When you pray, can't nobody stop you. When you pray, can't nobody block you. When you pray, can't nobody hinder you. What God has for you, it is for you. Pray until something happens. Let me give you an acronym to help you deal with prayer. An acronym to help you deal with prayer. A-C-T-S. First of all, it begins with adoration. God, we adore you. Heaven and angels bow before you. There's something about the name. Or at the name of Jesus, kings and kingdoms will all pass away. But there's something about the name. Something about the name. Jesus, you already know this. Help in the name. There's hope in the name. There's healing in the name. There's restoration in the name. There's joy in the name. There's forgiveness in the name. There's love all in that name. You and I got a name that can turn every situation around. I got a name that can remove dark clouds from over my head so the sun can shine again. That name moved me from midnight to midday. That name moved me from morning to music. That name. Oh, there's something. There's power in that name. You can call him. 
Peter was asleep in trouble. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, All ye that labor and are heavy laden, come unto me, I'll give you rest. 2022, we're not going to be bound and stricken by worry. We're going to rest in the Lord, knowing that God knows all of our needs. He promises to supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So God has all power. We no need to worry, no need to be stressed. I'm not going to be frustrated or distraught. I'm going to walk in the spirit. Peter must have known that God, according to his abundant mercy, has again gotten us into a lively hope, given us an inheritance undefiled, reserved in heaven. First Peter 1 verse 5 says this, we are kept by the power of God. We cannot keep ourselves with New Year's resolutions and more oaths and things we put on paper. We are kept by the power of God. Somebody say, I'm kept by the power of God. He promised to keep me. I'm sealed until the day of redemption. I might lose my joy for a moment, but he restores unto me the joy of my salvation. Make me to hear joy and gladness. Peter sleep between two soldiers bound with chains. More keepers at the door. The power of a praying church. While Peter was in a bad situation, the church was praying. Come on, help me for, for this year. We're going to have powerful prayer cells. A praying leader is a powerful leader. A praying woman is a powerful woman. A praying man is a powerful man. The Bible tells us to pray. Be persistent. Ephesians 6, 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Never let a day go by. We don't talk to God to give us guidance and direction. I'm trying to talk about the power of a praying church. Matter of fact, how's your prayer life? Little prayer, little prayer, power. Much prayer, much power. I'm not talking about trying to impress somebody by your articulation and extensive vocabulary, but when you talk to God from a sincere heart, God hears our prayers. Does God answer all prayer? Yes. Sometimes yes. Sometimes no. Sometimes no, not now. Adoration. C-T-S. Confession. Tell God what he already knows. First John 1 John 1.9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Come in God's presence and confess, God, I've, I, I've come short of your glory. And I ask that, like David said, have mercy upon me according to the multitude of your tender mercies. God, can you blot out all of my transgressions? Sometimes I am amazed. Somebody put it this way. It's better to come in God's presence with no words but a clean heart than to have eloquent words and an unclean heart. Prayer is a dialogue, not a monologue. Prayer is really more about listening to God than God hears us. Somebody said it this way. If you listen to God, you can assure yourself that God will listen to you. Can I get a witness? Adoration, confession, thankfulness. You know this familiar scripture, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Be anxious. For nothing. That scripture is more alive for you and me now than ever before in the midst of uncertainties, in the midst of unprecedented health global challenges like Omicron and Delta. But the God we serve is more powerful than Delta. He can deliver more powerful than Omicron because he's omnipotent. Be anxious for nothing. Stop worrying about stuff we can't change. Stop worrying about stuff we can't fix. Stop fretting and being fearful. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and of a sound mind. When we pray to God, we don't pass on our panic to God. We allow God to pass on his peace that passes all understanding through Christ Jesus for us. 
if and as we spend time thanking God for all that he's already done, oh, I've had some challenges in 2021 that I didn't know how God was going to resolve, but I come to report this morning the victory song. God has answered my prayer and even exceeded my expectations. So I am happy to serve God. I just want to serve God and love God more. I just want to do more for God to be a better servant, to be a better witness, to be better loving, to be more caring, to be more in tune. And I said, God, I got to confess as your shepherd, as your child, as your son, I've not had the kind of strong prayer life that I need, but I promise you going forward, I'll slow my happy self down, spend more time in your presence that I might hear from you, that I might better serve you, that I might better love and lead your people. God, forgive me for not being as diligent in prayer, but going forward from this day, from this moment, from this second, going on from forward, I will be in your presence. I will pray so that I hear from you in a world of many voices, in a world of many choices. I want to hear what thus said the Lord. I want to be like Peter, be able to sleep in the midst of a storm. Sometimes storms in life are raging in the midst of hurricanes and typhoons and tornadoes in our life. Physically, meteorologically, and emotionally, God gives us a peace. He quiets my spirit. Know who you are, child of God. Be a child of God that's in prayer. Dr. Gene Rice, the late Old Testament professor from Howard University, we would come in his office with the cares and challenges of ministry. His first question would always be this. Have you prayed about it? What is God saying? Fall on our knees. Talk to God about it. Hear what God has to say about your situation. One writer put it this way. Talk less to men. Talk less to women. Talk more to God. Hear less from people. Hear more from God. The power of a prayer in church. Peter's struggling. Many are hurt. Many are wounded. We need to be in prayer. Pray for healing of our physical bodies. Pray for healing of our spiritual lives. Pray for mental health concern. Prayer is the key that unlocks the blessings of God. Don't miss this. The church exhibits power when it prays. Dr. D.L. Moody, the great minister, the great Christian, the great leader of God's people, said, if you check Christian history, no great movement ever came to be without men and women of God on their face, on their knees before God. Somebody put it this way very simply. When life gets too difficult to stand, you ought to try kneeling. <laughs> you stand the tallest. When you kneel in God's presence, help me, Holy Spirit. We stand the tallest and the strongest when we're before God. Crying out to God for help, insight, and illumination. The power of a praying church. The persecuted church. There's still some heritage around today who are persecuting God's people. Sometimes we are not mindful, take so many blessings for granted. Here's what I'm saying. In many places around the world, you can be thrown in jail for using the name Jesus in public. You can be killed. Some years ago, my wife and I were at a Southern Baptist convention. I believe down in New Orleans, there was a man on the screen who had to turn his back while giving his testimony. He said, I cannot show my face because if I do, the moment my plane, plane lands back in my homeland, they will kill me because I lifted up the name of Jesus. We can freely worship. We can pray in public. Though they're trying to limit that, we have been given divine privileges to pray and worship freedom of religion in America. Let's not ever take that for granted. We must be praying for those that are under extreme persecution around the world. For the name of Jesus. Paul. Acts. 
stoned and left that side of Lystra for dead. But the disciples came around him and prayed, and he rose up. While the church was praying, the late Puritan preacher James Washington said, God dispatched an angel from heaven by the name of Gabriel, came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. Let me slow down for a moment. Peter was in a dark, clammy cell, a prison. But because the church was praying, now enters light. Help me, Holy Spirit. Many today face some dark, difficult, and devastating situations. But when we pray, God will turn the dark, difficult, devastating situation into light. He is the light of the world. And the angel said to Peter, arise up quickly. Many are downcast, downtrodden. But when we pray, God sends in the light and folks start to rise up. Prayer lifts one's spirit. Prayer lifts one's soul. Prayer lifts one's sight for the dismal things of life on planet Earth. Lifts our thoughts up to heaven. I look to the hill when it comes my help because all of my help comes from the Lord. Rise up, child of God. You're not meant to be down all the time. You're going to rise up. And the chains fell off. I'm trying to preach, teach my way through this thing. Because the church was praying. God sent an angel. God sent in light. He helped folks to rise up. And the chains fell off. Help me somebody. It could be a chain of despair. A chain of depression. A chain of hurt. A chain of neglect. When you pray, chain starts falling off. Clink, 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 clink. I can hear the chains falling. Take the chains off my feet so I can dance. Take the chains off my eyes so I can see the goodness and the glory of God. Take the chains off my ears so I can hear what thus said the Lord. Jesus said, my sheep know me and they know my voice. Chains be gone. And the angel said, gird up thyself. And bind up thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, cast that garment about thee and follow me. And he went and followed him. And when it was true, he said, I thought I saw a vision. When you pray, God sends in light. When you pray, God will rise you up. When you pray, God will take the chains off your hand. When you pray, God will move in such a mighty way. You feel like you are in a dream. Having a vision, is it real? God says, I'm about to do some amazing things. I'm about to wow you. I'm about to bless you coming in and going out. I'm going to press it down. I'm going to shake it together. It'll be running over. I'm going to bless you beyond your wildest imagination. When you pray, they came to the second ward. And the iron gate leads to the city open on its own accord. We thought the stores had something new when you can step on a pillar on the ground and the door opens. When you pray, doors open. Stuff that was closed become open. Negative doors that open become closed. When you pray, God hears. When we pray, God moves. What is it in your life this morning, child of God, that you can't get over? You're stuck. You come to an impasse. You're so broken. You're so hurt. You said, I'll never love again. Never say never. When you pray, God takes that nevers. And turns him around, gives you insight, gives you ability to take one step at a time, moving you forward in life when you pray. Finally, Peter came to himself. When you pray, God will help you come to yourself. Stop doing crazy and foolish things. Realize it is the goodness of the Lord that we are not consumed. His mercies are new every day. Great is your faithfulness. God, I realize it wasn't me that had lived so good, that had loved so well and had done so great, planned so strategically, it was you. Prayer opens my heart to love you more. Prayers open my eyes to see you better by faith. I stop walking by sight. Prayer helps me to hear. Prayer guides me. Prayer leads me. I'm no longer led by my flesh. I'm led by the Spirit because I'm in prayer. He came to himself and said this, verse 11, I know of a certainty the Lord has sent his angel where you are and where I am this morning. It was nobody but the Lord. Somebody said, somebody pray for me. 
had us on that mind, took the time to pray for you and for me. Peter realized it was the doing of the Lord that had delivered him out of the hand of Herod. Have you ever been in a situation that looked hopeless? I said before, let me say one last time. When we pray, we realize we are the beneficiaries of an endless hope. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Oh, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is but sinking sand. The power of a praying church. Go ahead and persecute me, but you only make me stronger. Beat me down so God can build us up. Try to hurt us so God can help us. Sometimes persecution gives us another divine opportunity to see God's hand at work. To see God's power. The power of a praying church. Point number three, and I'll be done for the morning. We saw the persecution of the church, one through four. Five through 12, we see the power of a praying church. Now, 13 to 17, we see the answered prayer of the praying church. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, verse 12 of chapter 12 of Acts. Many were gathered together praying. Peter realized where the prayer meeting was. Somebody said one time, what are we going to do on Wednesday night? I said, we're going to pray. They said, that's all we're going to do? They didn't mean no harm. They knew not what they were saying. God says, I've got power reserved for you if you would only access the power by prayer. Don't give up on that child. Don't give up on that spouse. Don't give up on a friend. Don't give up on life. Talk to God. Pray about it. Watch God move. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. His line is never, ever busy. He walks with me, and he talks with me, tells me I'm his own. Peter came to the house of Mary where they were gathered together praying for foot this year. As we get through this Omicron, it's not going to last forever, though it seems like, feel like, look like it will at times. We're going to pray, say, you know what? We're going to pray your kingdom down. We're going to preach your kingdom down. We're going to teach your kingdom down. We're going to pray some more. Pray in everything we do. Pray that God will lead. God will guide. God will direct. Guide me, oh, thy great Jehovah. Make us men and women of prayer. Peter came back to the house where they were praying together. We're going to have some all-day prayer sessions in 2022. We're going to do like they did in the olden days. We're going to have an all-night prayer season. As soon as old Omicron is lifted, he can't stay here. He doesn't belong here. We're going to block out some time. Turn down our place. Spend all night in prayer like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did in Luke chapter 6, verse 12. Peter knocked at the door of the gate, and Rhoda came to the door. Rhoda got all excited, said, it, 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 when the answer to prayer starts knocking, open the door. <laughs> when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the door for gladness. When you pray and, and God answers your prayer, you ought to be glad about it. You ought to be joyful about it. You ought to be happy about it. Has, has he not done it for you? Has he not done it for me? I stand amazed at God's power to answer prayer. but ran and told how Peter stood before the gate. Peter knocking at the door. She was all excited, didn't open the door. When God answers your prayer, open the door, receive your blessing. We don't deserve it. We can't earn it, we can't merit it, but God gives abundantly, press down, shaking together and running over. Open the door. She said, it's Peter. They said, child, you are mad. When you pray, no one believed that God would answer prayer. Never, ever doubt, never, ever doubt, never, ever doubt our God. He's able to do it seemingly abundantly above all we can ask, think, or even imagine. 
God will not give you anything if you doubt him. She said, no, I'm for real. It's Peter. They said, no, child, you, 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 you're mad. It must be his angel. How is it that they were praying but did not believe that which they were praying for? Have you ever prayed a prayer, didn't think God could do it? Don't you know who he is? He's able. He's got all power. He can move any mountain. He can cross any waters. Our God can do anything. Luke 137 tells us in Luke 137, with God, nothing is impossible. Your situation, my situation, did not catch God by surprise. He already knew that it would come before it came. He knew when, where, and how he would move, how he would deliver. Child of God, I encourage you this morning. Any concern you have, give it to Jesus. Reminds me of the little girl with the doll whose arm was off in her hand. She kept saying, Daddy, Daddy, my doll baby's arm is broken. It's broken. He said, Honey, as long as it's in your hand, I can't fix it. But if you give it to me, she gave it to her daddy. He put the arm back in place. She began to smile and rejoice. That's what God wants you and me to do. Anything in a life that is broken, that's unfit, that's not as it ought to be, give it to Jesus. That child, that anointed grandchild that's special, that husband, that wife, that job, that neighbor, that whatever, your health, your hypertension, your diabetes, your, your Alzheimer's, your whatever ails you, Give it to Jesus. He is the great physician. He's a healer. Any addiction, give it to Jesus. Somebody said, I know he can do it. Holy Spirit is stronger than any addiction. It's stronger than 50 and all. That 50 times stronger than heroin. He's able. I'm not telling you what I think. I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm just telling you what I know. He can change a jacked up mind. Set the affections on things which are above. He can heal a broken heart. He can mend a wounded soul. Our God is able. Our God is great. Great to be praised. Our God is all that we need. You ought to try him today. Pray like everything depends on God. Pray some more and pray without ceasing. Peter continued knocking. Sometimes in prayer, just because you pray for three days, we want instant microwave deliverance. Sometimes God takes his own time. I like what it said back in Galatians 4, 4. God does all things in the fullness of time. Delay does not necessarily mean deny. It means wait on the Lord and be of good courage. You shall mount up with wings like an eagle. You can run and not be weary. Peter kept on knocking. When they finally opened the door, they were astonished. I'm expecting God in 2022 to do some amazing things in Four Foot Family, collectively and corporately. But I'm also expecting God to do something amazing in your life and my life individually so that we would be days glazed and amazed, even astonished. God answers prayer. He's a prayer hearing God. He's a prayer answering God. I'm trying to get to the close here, but when I think of the goodness of the Lord and all that is done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, bless the name of Jesus. Every now and then I feel like heaven come down and glory fill my soul. I got to give him praise. I got to give him glory. I got to give him honor. He's answering my prayer. Father, you're in my expectations. I don't deserve it. I can't earn it. I can't bear it, but I'm so glad. I rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Long as there's air in my lungs, blood in my veins, I'm going to pray to the Father. I'm going to pray. I'm going to trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus Christ. Pray. Be the church that has prayer on our list. Prayer is not an addendum or an appendage. Prayer is central. The power of a praying church. The persecuted church. The power of a praying church. And the prayers of the answered. The answered prayer of a praying church. God, we give you all of us today. We pray for a better focus. Better commitment. We give you our heart's felt desires. That we would really be the people of God. When 
answer to prayer keeps knocking, we're going to open the door. This, somebody said it this way as I conclude for the fifth time. If you only prayed this prayer, God, thank you. That would be sufficient. God, thank you for waking me up this morning. Over 700 folk, 700,000 folk have gone to glory in this season. We are still here. God, we thank you for allowing us to see January 2nd, 2002. God, I thank you for my family. God, I thank you for my wife. God, I thank you for my friends. God, I thank you for my church. So much to be thankful for. Him knowledge just got it right when he said, if I had a thousand tongues to give your name praise, that would still not be enough. God, I thank you. God, I bless you. God, I worship you in the spirit of beauty and holiness. We call on your name. We stand on the word of God. Thank you, God, for hearing our prayers. No scholar, no theologian can fully explain how is it that we can pray on earth and our prayers go to heaven other than the assistance of the Holy Spirit. You may not believe it, but I believe it all of my heart, all of my soul, and with all of my mind. I know God hears our prayers. I know God answers our prayers. I know what prayer can do. Push until something great happens. Pray when you feel like it. Pray when you don't. Pray when the sun is shining and pray when the rainy days. Pray on payday. Pray when it's not payday. Pray for your children. Pray. Be guilty of being a prayer warrior as we continue to move forward for the glory of God. Thank you for your patience and prayers this morning. I'm just trying to say that we want to be the church that exhibits the power of a praying church. God be praised. Hallelujah. Bless his name. If you're here this morning and don't know this Jesus, if you would pray, God, forgive me, I'm a sinner. I want you to be my savior. Like Peter, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Revelation 3.20. If you open the door, I'll come in and sup with you. You can come out of darkness and begin to walk in a marvelous light. He hears your prayer this morning. If you see the numbers on our screen this morning, they are there for you to help you. Our anointed altar counselors are on duty, anointed, standing by to help you to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You don't want to go another day, another minute, another second without having Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He's waiting for you. He died on the over the cross, got up out of the grave with all power in his hand so that you could have this moment in time that will impact eternity. What a privilege to talk to Jesus today through the power of prayer. If you already have become a child of God, he's already your Lord and Savior, you are welcome to become a member of our loving, caring church with the heart for missions, a praying church today. We'll take your name, and as soon as this Omicron season breaks, we'll share with you a new members' classes and eventually give you the right hand in the fellowship. You can become a member of the Four Foot Baptist Church, a church where Jesus is the main attraction, a church that prays with you and for you. Don't let this moment pass. If ever we needed the Lord before, we sure do need him now. We are praying for you. That God will speak to your heart this morning. Let's be in prayer for our nation that's in peril. It's midnight in our nation in one sense. Pray for your family. Pray for yourself. Pray that all that are, don't, are lost and do not know Jesus Christ have a heart warming, changing life experience this day. What a mighty God we serve. I would that you would take a moment to prepare yourself for our communion this morning, first Sunday of 2022. Prayer, again, allows us to commune with God. 
I'm humbled and amazed that the great God desires to fellowship with his people. The Bible even said he inhabits the praise communion of his people. Prepare you some juice represents the blood, some bread or crackers that represents his broken body. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come to say thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We come knowing that we're not worthy to receive these emblems that represent your body. God, we come humbly before you this morning having a fresh glimpse of your greatness and your glory. Greater love is no man than this, than a man will lay down his life for a friend. Colossians 1.21 tells us that we were not even your friends. We were alienated and enemies in our own minds because of our wicked works, yet now have you reconciled. God, we come before you this morning confessing any sin in our life lest we partake of these sacraments unworthily. God, we ask that you would bless this bread that we're about to partake that represents your broken body. You were wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, yet the chastisement of our peace was upon you, yet by your stripes are we healed. We pray. <laughs>
This will be a year of renewal. This will be a year of restoration. This will be a year of revival to the point that we will pray till the power comes down, till burdens are lifted, health is restored. God's word goes forward like never before. This is a church that shows the power of a praying church in 2022. Let us look to the Lord. Now unto him that's more than able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be dominion, majesty, glory, and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. May the agape love of Jesus Christ fill your heart. May you realize his infinite care and his mercy. Walk with the king and be a blessing until we meet again. Be much in prayer. Hallelujah. Have a great day.